is happening guys welcome back to the channel for a brand new video i already have a feeling that today's video is going to be a little bit on the longer side so i don't want to waste too much time and i want to just jump right into it what i'm going to be doing in today's video is pulling the ppe transmission pan off from the 68 rfe underneath this 67 truck and we are going to remove the valve body so that we can do a little bit of work to it as i'm sure you could tell from those opening clips now the kit that i have that we're going to be installing into the valve body i picked up from next gen diesel and uh well it's gonna be probably a little bit of a time consuming job should be fairly straightforward and well i'm here to make this video to hopefully help any of you guys who have a 6.7 with a 68 RFE and you wanna get this done on your truck as well. You can learn from my experience and what I go through. Now, before I wander on over to the tailgate and start showing you the parts that come in this kit, I just wanna say that Nate over at Next Gen Diesel has been awesome in getting back to me, answering some questions that I had. And I chose to go with his kit for the simple fact that it is just more than a bonded separator plate. Other companies like ATS, BD Diesel, and the other guys out there who have these kits for your 68 RFE valve bodies basically are just getting you set up with a bonded separator plate and they don't have all the other little bits and pieces to go along with it. That is where Next Gen Diesel kind of stepped up a little bit to start including these other parts and make their kit a little bit more complete to help ensure that your valve body is going to be as happy as possible for as long as possible. Now the main part and the main purpose of doing this kit is to get this bonded separator plate installed. And to keep it somewhat brief, what this basically does is change the fluid circuitry in the valve body and it allows you to up the line pressure of the transmission, therefore allowing you to get stronger clamping force on the clutch packs, helping to generate a little bit less heat and whatnot from having less slippage yada 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 you know the drill and if you don't know the drill i will have next gen diesel's youtube channel linked up below in the video description so that you can go and check out nate talking about this kit and giving you the rundown on all the parts that are included in it the next part we have is the accumulator cover plate this plate right here is made out of a thicker piece of steel compared to the original one that comes from the factory, which I believe is like a stamped metal, and it's very thin and weak and prone to just bend due to higher line pressures. If you wanna turn up the line pressure on your truck, what will happen is, is it can actually shear the heads off of the bolts that hold this thing to the valve body, and it can bend it and break it, blow an accumulator piston out, just causing you trouble that you don't wanna to have to deal with. So we have an upgraded beefy accumulator cover plate right here. This kit also comes with a new solenoid switch valve plug. And now for the main part that you do not receive in any of the other kits out there on the market and that is the billet accumulator piston. These things are machined out with three different grooves for three different seals. You got two seals on each end of the accumulator piston, and then there's a third groove right here for a scarf cut seal. But don't get me wrong, you don't want these things sealed up so tight that they don't allow any fluid to get by. They're actually designed to let some fluid by, as you can see from these little notches right here. So the seals go around each end here, and some fluid is meant to get past, but the thing with these is, is that they seal up nice and tight in the bore and they allow the proper amount of fluid to get through doing their job correctly. But like I said, guys, I'm not a transmission guru. I'm not a transmission tech. I don't build transmissions. I just know what I have been told, what I have seen, and just from the research that I've read about these things. So I am relaying the information that sticks out in my head and that I remember to you guys. And that is exactly why I am going to link up Next Gen Diesel's channel down below in the description so that you're able to go over there and check out their videos where Nate gives you the full breakdown on this stuff and tells you everything in great detail. So I have spent a ton of time already getting things kind of cleaned up in the garage, making room on the bench so that I had a place to put the valve body once I get it pulled out from the truck and I had a, just a little spot that I could work on it, separate everything and not lose stuff, keep track of everything. So make sure you got yourself a good clean workstation that you're not gonna contaminate the valve body with dirt, debris, anything like that because anything that gets stuck to it or in it as you put it back together, is gonna be right in your transmission and that is the last thing you want. You don't want any contaminants in the transmission. So 
take the time before you get started to set yourself up with a nice clean work environment so that you're able to do this, do it correctly, and put everything back safely. Right now, I think I'm all set up and ready to go, so I'm gonna jump underneath the truck, start draining the PPE transmission pan. So the first order of business is I had to go ahead and just pull this shift cable out a little bit. There's two little metal tabs on it that I pinched and I just, I didn't take it all the way out. I just moved it enough so that I was able to get the plug undone on the solenoid pack right here. And she's about to blow. Look at that nice fluid. All right, so I got all of the pan bolts broken loose, broke them loose with a ratchet. Now I'm gonna use the wonderful little 3.8 stubby Milwaukee Impact to just finish zipping them all out and get this pan out of the way. So here's what the inside of the PPE transpan looks like and the condition of our fluid. As you can see, the fluid is very nice looking. Super clean, nice bright red color. And then there's our ISPRO EV2 trans temp sensor. Just barely poking out into the inside of the pan, so that's a good thing. But otherwise, everything is looking A-OK -okay inside of here. I'm gonna get rid of the rest of this fluid, make sure this pan is 100% cleaned out because I did get a little bit of debris and whatnot down here. You can see it in the corner. So I'm gonna get this all cleaned up while that is dripping into the catch pan and then I'll catch up with you guys after. This is what you're going to be looking up at once you drop that filter out of place. After that, you're going to have six, I think it is, 10 millimeter bolts that you're going to remove to get the valve body out of there. They're right here along the edges. There's three of them there. There's another one over here, one back here, and then you got one here on the side. Support the valve body just like you did the pan when you drop that so that you don't drop it and damage it. Take it to your clean, contaminant-free workbench and go ahead and start to disassemble. And that is what the interior of a 68 RFE looks like once you drop the pan and get the valve body removed. With the valve body on the bench, we gotta start by removing the solenoid pack. And there's 15 T20 Torx. So all these bolts right here are gonna be a T20 Torx. 15 of them up here in this region are for the solenoid pack. What I did was took a yellow paint marker right here and I went and marked all of the solenoid pack bolts so I know which ones they were and then I can remove them and then I'll know which ones they are when I go to put them back. And then when I go to put everything back what I'm going to do is use a white paint marker after I get these all torqued down to 55 inch pounds I'll hit them with a white paint marker so I know which ones have been torqued and I can continue on throughout them until they're all done. And before I started zipping these out with the impact, I went and broke torque on all of them with a little quarter inch ratchet. After those 15 bolts come out, the solenoid pack will be loose. It won't be held on by anything. So just support it, turn this thing over and then grab it and set it to the side in a safe location where it's not gonna get damaged or dirty. I got one T20 bolt left right here. And then this one here is actually a T15. Both of these need to come out so that you can remove this arm and lift this plate up out of the way so that you're able to slide the pin out from inside. And now with those out of the way, we can slide this pin out right here. And I'm gonna be very careful because I don't know if there's anything attached to it that can drop or fall. And it doesn't appear to be that way. It's just a pin. So I'm gonna set that with the rest of this stuff. Now we should be in good shape to flip this over and loosen up the rest of the T20 bolts so that we can separate the two halves and get to the separator plate. So what I'm doing right now is I am installing the seals onto the new billet accumulator pistons. We have the two seals on the ends and then the scarf cut seal in the middle. 
Once I have all the seals installed, I'm gonna lubricate the hell out of these with ATF plus four fluid, and then I can remove that accumulator plate on the side right here and take out the old accumulator pistons and get these new ones ready to install. And I'm preparing for a little bit of a battle while doing that because these are gonna have a lot tighter of a tolerance when trying to put them in and be a much tighter fit. But we'll figure it out and we'll get it done. And the final scarf cut seal. Boom. So these bolts here are about three eighths of an inch long, maybe just under a half inch long. So you can tell the difference between these and the rest of them, but still keep them separate so you know what's what. I'm gonna set those little bolts with the check balls. When you take out your accumulator pistons, there's gonna be springs inside each one of them. And you want to make sure that you do not mix those springs up and that they go right back in the same place that they came from. There's going to be two springs in all of these here and then one spring down here in this end one. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the one that has one spring in it is the overdrive one or has something to do with overdrive. But make sure you keep all the springs together. Do one at a time, reinstall the new accumulator piston with its set of springs and then go ahead and move on to the next one so on and so forth. And let me just give you some more free advice. Go ahead and get yourself a big ass box of shop rags because trust me, you're gonna use a lot of them. So I'm gonna pull this first set of springs out here and now I should be able to pull this piston right out and I can way too easily. So this thing definitely is not, uh, not creating a seal, that's for sure. So the two seals that are on it appear to be a scarf cut style seal. So there's two scarf cut seals it looks like and let's just say that they're not sealing anything. You can see how easily this thing slides in and out of there. Look at, look at how loose that is, the tolerance in that. This thing is not creating any type of seal if you ask me. That should not come out that easily. And I think we're about to find out that these new billet accumulator pistons will not go in there without a fight. So I'm gonna get some fluid on these seals here and get them as lubricated and oiled up as I can. You don't wanna just jam these and try to shove them straight into the bore. So I'm just trying to spin them a little bit to get these seals to seat properly. All right, so it looks like they'll both go in. I just gotta spin them a little bit and slowly work them into position. So there's one. All right, we've got our first one in the hole. And go ahead and stick this set of springs in there. All right, let's get this seal going. All right, that one seems good. And that one seems good. Yeah, these suckers definitely create a vacuum and a seal. You can feel it. As soon as I get this seal to kind of start in there, and then I want to pull it out and flip it to get the other seal started and seated, you could feel the suction on this sucker. And there we go. She's in there. So this one has put up the worst fight out of them all so far. There we go, we got her. And the springs. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear this when I pull it out to flip it and get this other seal seated and started, but you can hear and feel the suction after you pull it out. versus this stock one, nothing. You can't hear a thing. So here's the scoop when installing the new accumulator plate. They give you these six new fasteners, but you're only gonna use some of these in certain locations. And then in the other locations over here, you're gonna use the OE style fasteners because apparently they can't have a bigger, fatter style head on the screw down on this side. So on the overdrive side, you can use the provided screws with the plate, but on the opposite end, you're gonna have to use the factory ones, and that is as per the directions. The OE screw locations cannot have thicker head fasteners. And there's also extra holes on this plate that you can mark out on the valve body, 
and then you can drill and tap those holes to use additional fasteners for some extra clamping force. But we aren't going to be going that route because I don't have the drill bit or the tap and I don't really think that it's necessary. I think that that's just one of those extra precautionary measures that you can take but not necessary. But first order of business is there is this larger washer that's included in the kit and that's actually a shim to go between the overdrive accumulator piston and the spring that goes inside of it. So you get the piston installed and then put this shim on the end of the spring and then slide the spring into place. And the overdrive accumulator piston is the only one that has one spring in it. So I'm using three of the provided screws right here on the overdrive end and then four of the original OE screws on the rest of them. And if I had the drill in the tap for this kit, I could punch out these three extra holes here and then use these last three provided screws in there to get some extra clamping force on this plate. But we should be good. These provided ones are going to get torqued down to 70 inch pounds and then the OE ones will get torqued down to 40 inch pounds and that should be plenty for us. The next thing on our to-do list is the solenoid switch valve which is located right here. There's a channel in here and there's a little clip that you have to get a little pick in there and you can lift that right up out of there. So you just get a little pick in there and then just pull this little clip right up out of there. Then use your pick to get down in here and just move the solenoid switch valve to the end of its bore there. And you can go ahead and remove that and get your new one installed. So your OE switch valves are actually just like three little plugs and that's it. And they sit right in this bore and the way that this new one is set up is a little billet aluminum plug that sits on this other one that actually has a little guided stud, I would call it. And what that's gonna do is basically help to keep these aligned so that they don't get cocked and jam up more or less inside the bore. So they're gonna go in just like this. You're gonna install the new ones and then use one of your OE end plugs over it and then go ahead and put your little retaining clip back in. And now we are on to installing our bonded separator plate. And what is nice about this separator plate and sets it apart from the competition is it is bonded with a gasket on both sides. They're not a separate gasket that comes in the kit and then you have to lay it on here and then lay it down on the valve body and pin it down between the channel plate and everything. This all comes bonded dual sided gaskets ready to go and that is it. So let's go over the instructions for this bonded separator plate really quick. They're not all that clear but after I looked at them a few times and realized that I misread them and misunderstood them I'm going to break it down for you guys to make it easier if you guys are going to install this kit. So basically what you got here on this sheet it tells you for stock applications, you're gonna overlay your stock separator plate onto the new bonded separator plate, and you're gonna drill these two 764 holes. So when you take this stock separator plate and you overlay it onto the new one, you're gonna see this little mark right here, and it shows you on the directions where it is, and you're gonna use that hole in the stock one as a guide to drill your new 764 holes. And that is for a stock application with no transmission tuning. And there are my two 764 holes right there, which go into a little worm track inside the channel casting, the channel plate. Now, if you have a heavy duty application, you aren't going to drill those two 764 holes. And what you're gonna do is drill a 1 8 inch hole over here. And what that does is allow you to get those higher line pressures if you have transmission tuning. And they clearly state that a Sonex or even like a BD line pressure booster is not transmission tuning and it will not work with this modification of drilling a 1 8 inch hole there. So if you have just a line pressure booster from Sonex or BD diesel, don't drill the 1 8 inch hole drill the two 764 holes and keep the stock application for your truck. If you decide you want to get transmission tuning later on down the road, 
you are going to have to pick up a new bonded separator plate, pull this valve body back out and swap it out with a new one to keep these two 764 holes blocked off. But you don't want these two 764 holes drilled if you're drilling the 1 8 inch hole through this little channel here. So if you are going to do transmission tuning down the road, you don't have it yet. I would suggest going with the two 764 holes for now and just running it as it was in its stock form. And then once you get your transmission tuning, go ahead, drop the valve body back out of the truck, replace this bonded separator gasket with a new one, and then punch your 1 8 inch hole and leave this spot right here solid and do not drill the 764 holes. Then reinstall everything and then install your tuning for the transmission and you'll be good to go. So for now, I'm gonna start putting this thing back together. I've already got all the check balls back in where they belong. Once I get it back together, we can reinstall it into the truck and then later on down the road, I will go ahead and get the transmission tuning to bump the line pressure up. We'll just go ahead and quickly swap out this. We already got all the hard stuff done and replaced everything else. So it won't be that bad to just drop this back out again. Swap out the separator plate, put a new one in there, drill that 1 8 inch hole and bump up our line pressure for some better holding power on the clutch packs. Channel casting and separator plate are laid back in place. There is two alignment dowel pins to help it go back into its position. And now we are just putting all the screws back in. And these are where the solenoid pack gets bolted on. So we need to basically just follow straight across, straight up and then everything below that and over is what you gotta put in to clamp this thing back down. I'm tightening these down to 55 inch pounds and working from the middle out. So start in the middle and then work your way to the outer edges. Slide our pin back in here. So there's a notch cut out on this plate here that you want to line up with the post that is on the pin that you just slide in here. So go ahead and line that up. And basically how this thing functions is once that pin is in there, this slides back and forth like such. And that's what selects your gear when you are moving the shifter inside the cab. The solenoid pack reacts with this, it moves it back and forth with your little shift lever here. Now I don't remember which detent this thing was in, so we're gonna go ahead and just set it and then see if we can get it to match up inside the truck. If it doesn't match up, we'll have to pull it back out and adjust it. After you get your solenoid pack back on your valve body, you want to bring it down here underneath the truck, put it up into position to see if your shift selector is going to line up with this pin right here on the linkage stuff inside the case. So that's how you're gonna determine which detent that shift selector rod on the uh, valve body is going to be in. So just put it back on there for now and then get it back down underneath the truck, put it up there and if it doesn't line up, just pull the valve body down, move that selector forward or backward a detent until it lines up and then you're good to put the valve body back up in there. Valve body is mounted back up in there. I just need to torque down those six eight millimeter bolts to 106 inch pounds. Then I can get the filter put back in, reinstall the pan and the gasket, torque that down, fill it up, and then we can fire it up and see what she does. You guys already know the deal. Use a little bit of Vaseline around the pan here, and then we set the gasket on there just to help hold it in place. Then I feed a couple of the pan bolts up through there to hold the gasket and get this thing started onto the bottom of the transmission. And then we can go ahead and feed the rest of the bolts up in there, get them all tightened down and torque them and start filling it up with fluid. Okay guys, that is gonna wrap up the video for this Bulletproof 68 Valve Body Installation Kit. Kit, what? Okay guys, that is gonna wrap up the video for this Bulletproof 60. Okay guys, that is gonna wrap up the Bulletproof 68 Valve Body Kit installation video. Wow, that's a, that was a mouthful. That's what she said. Okay guys, that is going to wrap up the video for this Bulletproof 68 Valve Body Kit installation. Seriously though, we're going to wrap it up here guys. Make sure you are subbed with those notifications on so you don't miss out on any of the content like this. 
with the fourth gen Cummins build. Also, if you guys could hit that like button on your way out, I would greatly appreciate it, especially for trying to go as in-depth as I could with this installation process. Uh, the directions that come with the kit are not really all there. There isn't really too many directions. So I believe I'm probably one of the only or one of the first videos to be out here on YouTube to show how to install this kit from start to finish. So I tried to give you as much info uh, from my experience with this as I could. So if you guys could hit that like button for me, I would greatly appreciate it. And don't forget to check out all those links down below in the description to everybody helping out with the fourth gen content. Go check out Next Gen Diesel's YouTube channel if you wanna get more of the technical specs on this kit and more technical specs on the 68 in general. Uh, Nate does a really great job of breaking it all down and giving you all that nitty gritty. So go check those guys out. Let them know that I sent you and I will see you guys again soon in the next video. Peace.